All right, so we've talked about the anatomy of the heart, the conduction, basic EKG stuff. Now let's look into vector forces. I know vector forces may sound scary. I didn't like physics myself, but this should be pretty basic. So what vector forces is, vector forces have a force. So you can have small arrows, you can have big arrows, big forces, small forces, medium forces, so on, and direction. So that, in this case, we're all facing one direction. This vector force may be that way. It's going to have both a size and a direction, an amplitude and a direction, vector force. So how does that even fit into the heart? Why am I even talking about that? Good question. So in the normal anatomy of the heart, I'm going to kind of face off to the side. So here's a little orientation. Here's your left and the right. And here's your heart. I know it's a really good looking heart, um, but it's going to have a direction. For the most part, your heart is going to face kind of down towards your left hip, your left side a little. Um, here's your base of the heart. Here's your apex of the heart. For the most part, your SA node is going to start the impulse, conduction is going to go down, depolarize in a vector force direction. So if you added up all of the action potentials causing muscle contractions, that's going to cause a vector force. So let's say the heart was located here, here's your base, here's your apex. If your heart was oriented just straight up and down, not at this normal nice angle, if it was located straight up and down, here's your SA node, it's going to cause it, your vector force would be straight down. Likewise, so this is your direction component of a vector force. In this case, your direction is going to be kind of uh, down towards the left side. In this case, it's going to be straight down. That's going to be your direction force of your vector. So that's determined on kind of how the heart lies. Next, you're going to look at the amplitude. So I said vectors had direction and amplitude. Now let's look at the amplitude portion. You're going to have a small person's heart and a large person's heart using the same direction. Um, for this case, this is still going to be the left side, still the right side. Um, in this one, your SA node is going to cause the impulse. The impulse is going to go down. It's going to cause the atria to contract. It's going to go through the AV node, cause your ventricles to contract. Same thing in this situation. Direction is the same. The only thing that's different is going to be your amplitude. In heart, let's call this heart 1. Let's call this heart 2. In heart 1, you're going to have less heart muscle to contract. Simply because it's smaller. But let's say in a person that um, has a larger heart, you're going to have more muscle to contract. So for in a cardiomegaly patient, what you're going to have is you're going to have more myocardium that's going to cause a contraction. A larger contraction is going to be picked up on the EKG and it's going to cause a higher deflection. So we have the same direction but in this case your myocardium is less in heart 1 and more in heart 2. So let's, let's throw together an imaginary heart. So here's, here's just a basic EKG tracing like I showed earlier of heart 1 and for heart 2 and your atria are pretty much the same size your, it's your ventricles that really change um, then you're going to have a larger ventricle influence so your vector forces direction is going to be based on um, how your heart is located or let's say you had an enlarged left ventricle if a patient comes in with high blood pressure one of the major reasons why high blood pressure is such a bad thing causes that left Here's your left ventricle. It causes that left ventricle to work that much harder because you have a high blood pressure. You have to pump a lot harder. Um, it's going to cause ventricle enlargement. So you're just going to, after you know, after years of high blood pressure, this muscle is just going to get thicker and thicker and thicker, and that's going to cause more of an influence. Your let's say here's your right ventricle. Your right ventricle is going to stay the same because that goes to your lung. So if you have high blood pressure and that left ventricle enlarges, but that right ventricle really doesn't because it goes to the lungs. What's going to happen is you're going to have more of an influence of the left ventricle on your EKG tracing. So, likewise, you're going to have a higher deflection. In this case, your right ventricle and your left ventricle are about the same size. Your left ventricle is always going to be bigger 
in most cases. Um, so, but your your uh, amplitude is going to be a lot smaller. So, in heart two, when you have hypertrophy of your left ventricle, you're going to have a higher EKG tracing. You're going to have more amplitude. 